To the day's other news now, President Trump warning that he is considering eliminating all federal subsidies for General Motors. The threat on Twitter followed GM's plans to close plants in three states and stop building its hybrid electric Bolt model. At the White House, economic advisor Larry Kudlow said the president feels betrayed. There's disappointment that it seems like GM would rather build its electric cars in China rather than in the United States. Um, we are going to be looking at certain subsidies regarding electric cars and others, whether they should apply or not. I can't say anything final about that, but we're looking into it. GM defended itself in a statement saying that it acted to ensure long-term success. The company also said that it will give affected workers a chance to move to jobs at other plants. There are new questions tonight about a federal detention center for migrant teenagers in West Texas. It was established in June and quickly expanded to more than 2,300 children. The Associated Press reports that in a bid to keep up, officials dropped the use of strict FBI background checks for staffers, including screenings for child abuse. The nonprofit group managing the shelter says it is exceptionally well run. In Afghanistan, three American soldiers were killed today, the deadliest such attack in 17 months. Officials said a roadside bomb went off near the eastern city of Ghazni as the troops were carrying out raids with Afghan soldiers. The Taliban claimed responsibility. Tension stayed high today between Russia and Ukraine over a naval confrontation on Sunday. Moscow issued new warnings to Kiev, and it refused to return three Ukrainian Navy vessels and two dozen crewmen. Foreign Affairs correspondent Nick Schifrin reports. In Russian annex Crimea, mass soldiers paraded Ukrainian sailors in and then quickly out of a Russian-controlled court. And those same Ukrainian sailors were paraded on Russian TV, seemingly confessing to entering Russian territorial waters illegally, a crime for which they'll be detained for two months. It's only been two days since their boats were fired on by Russian ships as they sailed south away from the Crimean Peninsula's Kerch Strait, which both countries are legally allowed to use under a 2003 agreement. For four and a half years, Ukraine and Russia have been fighting. A Moscow-backed insurgency in eastern Ukraine has killed at least 10,000 people and kept Ukraine's government off balance. But this is the first attack Russia hasn't denied. Now Ukraine's firing back with intercepted Russian communications. It says prove the crisis was manufactured by Russian leaders. A Russian captain says to another Russian captain, quote, we should assault them. We have to destroy them. Medvedev is in panic. It seems that the president is controlling all that. Medvedev likely refers to Gennady Medvedev, head of the Russian intelligence service's border service office in Crimea. But today, Moscow stood firm in blaming Ukraine. It warned that Kiev's decision yesterday to impose martial law would lead to a surge in fighting in the pro-Russian rebel-held areas of eastern Ukraine. And Russia accused Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko of playing politics ahead of a March 2019 election. Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev. This martial law allows for the authorities to flex their muscles a little bit and boost their support amongst the population. But much of the world today supported Ukraine. Poland's president called for retaliatory sanctions against Moscow. There is no doubt that Russia is an aggressor, and it is not the first time there is a violation of the agreements between Russia and Ukraine regarding navigation. European countries are now considering helping the Ukrainian Navy, an effort State Department spokesperson Heather Nauert encouraged. One of the things that we would like to see take place is our European allies doing more to assist Ukraine. But the U.S. has to help lead that response. And tonight, President Trump threatened to cancel his planned meeting later this week with Russian President Vladimir Putin, saying, quote, I don't like that aggression at all. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Nick Schifrin. In northeastern Australia, firefighters today fought a major wildfire fueled by record November heat in the triple digits. Crews in Queensland state have battled 40 mile an hour winds that fanned flames across nearly 50,000 acres since Saturday. Tomorrow could be worse still, with temperatures of 104 degrees. The end of the week is um, looking pretty horrendous from our point of view. 
It is a heat wave across most of the state, particularly from the central to the northern part of the state. Unprecedented temperatures, unprecedented weather. Uh, we talked um, earlier about really this un is uncharted waters. We don't expect this at this time of year. The fire has destroyed four homes and hundreds of people have been forced to flee its advance. Trial opened in Chicago today for three current and former policemen accused of a cover-up after a white officer killed a black teenager. Laquan McDonald was shot 16 times in October 2014. Last month, another former officer, Jason Van Dyke, was convicted of second-degree murder in the killing. NASA has gotten more good news from its InSight probe on the surface of Mars. Overnight, the spacecraft opened its solar wings and began charging batteries, a vital step in starting its mission. InSight also sent a new photograph showing part of the probe and the landscape around it. It will spend the next two years digging into the Martian surface to study the planet's interior. On Wall Street today, stocks made up a bit more ground. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 108 points to close at 24,748. The Nasdaq rose a fraction of a point, and the S&P 500 added eight. And the man who created the wildly popular SpongeBob SquarePants cartoon series has died. Steven Hillenburg suffered from the muscle-wasting disease ALS. SpongeBob and his oceanic friends debuted in 1999 and have run for nearly 250 episodes. Along the way, the series also spun off a Broadway musical and two movies. Steven Hillenburg was 57 years old. Still to come on the news hour, California begins to grapple with the aftermath of the deadliest fire in state history. Congress to do list before Democrats take control of the House in January. A complicated set of loyalties for Jews living in Iran, country and religion, plus much more.